Hi, uh, I wanted to do a quick tutorial on uh, one of my projects in computer vision. Uh, specifically, the project was to make an aimbot in uh, Overwatch using uh, Cascades, using the OpenCV library, Python. Um, so I'm going to be, in this video, I'm just going to be walking through uh, what basically what my process was for that, uh, how the Cascade files were actually generated, um, some kind of work that I did with uh, shell commands to sort of streamline the process, and then actually show the results and using different types of Cascades on different types of targets. Um, so this GitHub repo here, I have like a set of instructions. Uh, basically, what you need uh, is your positive and negative strings, or so positive and negative images. So in this case, uh, I wanted to make a cascade that could uh, identify the training bot in the Overwatch target range. So all of my positive images are of that uh, bot. So here's an example of what they look like. Uh, it's extremely downscaled. Um, so basically, the, the smaller your image is, the quicker the cascades can be made, and it is a bit of a time-intensive process. So uh, these are all 35 by 50, but you can see my original size. I cropped these images just from either screen caps or stuff that I could find online. And they're quite a bit bigger and more defined. But uh, the actual ones I finally used, uh, just in the interest of time, were very, very small. Uh, same thing with the backgrounds. So backgrounds, I just went online and I looked up a bunch of you know screen caps of Overwatch, made sure that there weren't any uh, bots lying around in those images. So you can see that there's the full scale image, and that gets that got scaled down quite a bit as well, uh, maybe proportionally. But yeah, I'm using right. So instead of 1920 by 1080, I'm using 192 by 108. Um, so yeah. Uh, so those were the images that I used. I downscaled them using probably this uh, resize original py command uh, that I made, which you know OpenCV just provides an easy way to uh, resize uh, images. So iterate through the directory where you're holding your images, and uh, it'll resize them and put them somewhere nice, hopefully. Um, so after that, uh, I ran this bgen py command. Uh, this basically uh, gets your backgrounds in and um, it uh, creates a map to them, I guess. Uh, basically, this bgen txt, sorry, this bg txt file uh, just says where the backgrounds are and what their names are. And we're going to be using those to generate our uh, sample images in the next step, I think. Uh, right, so we have this create positives sh uh, sh shell file. Uh, this is when we're actually using um, our OpenCV, like, installation and uh, basically what, what it does is it superimposes uh, your positive images on your negative images. So if we go in here, uh, I think that we can take a look at one of these. Um, oh, excuse me. Uh, it goes in the info folder, I think. Uh, so you can see in this one folder. Uh, I can't really make it out there, but Basically, it takes a background from your negative and then superimposes an image of the training bot on it. So you can see right there, you can see kind of a faded image of the training bot. Uh, same thing here, just kind of randomly puts the bot in and uh, creates some information uh, oops, um, that, lets, uh, that lets OpenCV know where the bot is. So this, yeah, these LST files are kind of the key to that. So if we go in there again, and look at a folder. And we find our LST file. Some images. So our LST file uh, contains uh, the name of the image. And then I get, I assume, I'm not completely sure, but I assume that these are coordinates for the uh, positive image. Uh, and you know, some kind of parameters uh, letting OpenCV know like how the image has been imposed and uh, where it is and like how it's rotated and stuff like that. So that is pretty much all you need, I think, to start training your cascade. Uh, geez. Um, I think there's one last command. Uh, this create vector sh file. I'm not really sure what the vector file does. Uh, looking inside it, it's not really immediately apparent what the vector file does. And then there's this uh, create data sh file. So the create da data sh file. Uh, We're using our train cascade and you input some parameters so like uh, how many stages you want to train for uh, I think all the cascades I have now are trained to 20 um, so you know parameters for the width and the height of the positive image uh, how many kind of samples uh, you're gonna have where your backgrounds are coming from and the vector file that you're actually using so uh, stuff like that um, so once you do that 
Uh, I believe that that creates a cascade. Um, so maybe that appears in data. Uh, right, so you can see here, this is kind of the output. Uh, so for a 15 stage training, uh, you get your 15 stages and then you get your final <coughs> you get your final cascade output. Uh, and you can start using that in um, a simple script uh, like the one right here. Jeez. Uh, like the one right here. Uh, aimbot py. Uh, so in here I'm just setting um, you create kind of a I suppose this is called a cascade classifier. Uh, you identify where the screen is and then you're just kind of, I'm going through a, uh, a while loop here uh, that grabs um, the image from the screen dimensions that you specified. So I'm going to be running Overwatch on the left side of my screen, and it's going to be grabbing the left side of my screen and showing the uh, kind of OpenCV output on the right side of my screen. Um, so what it does here is it just, uh, you apply the bot cascade. So we're creating our bot cascade here, and we're applying it to a grayscale image. Uh, you have like a min neighbors argument. This basically, uh, the higher this is, uh, the less false positives you get, but the less, uh, the harder it will be to detect uh, what you're looking for. So, right, so this, lowering this uh, increases the amount of false positives that you get, but also increases your chance of actually uh, getting your kind of, you know, true uh, positive, or whatever the word is for that. Um, draws a rectangle on it, and then we have, uh, I have something here, just you can, um, input a key and we're going to get our Overwatch character to kind of just like jump to that. Uh, I used a WinDLL library, or sorry, the C-Types library. This uh, WinDLL command was one of the first commands that I could find that could actually like interact with the Overwatch uh, game. And basically what all it does is it uh, moves the mouse. Uh, I do a little bit of math here, kind of finding like where the bot center is and uh, where the screen center is. And then you just move the mouse in the direction to the bot center from the screen center. So without further ado, uh, I can jump into Overwatch and take a look at what this actually looks like. Uh, so da da da, practice range. Um, CMD file here, so Python. So the way I have it set up now currently is it asks for the name of the file. Uh, so, just take a look at that. So there were a couple that I, I made in different ways. One, uh, this front XML was made just using one sample photo. Uh, but there was one that I used kind of making a combination of uh, many different uh, input sample images. And I was hoping that... Uh, I was hoping that by doing that you could get kind of more of like, you could identify the bot from every angle uh, rather than just like from the one angle from the front of the photo. Um, unfortunately they seem to work about as well as each other. So we can see here the uh, my game is happening on the left and the OpenCV image is happening on the right. Uh, our blue rectangles are when it is correctly, or when it thinks it's found a bot. So, and then when I press the L key, uh, McCree will drift towards one of those rectangles. Unfortunately, it seems to think that the corner is the more promising target. We can see right now that's not me moving my mouse. If I go here, then McCree will hover over that bot. Uh, well, what's funny is like these are very sensitive to kind of uh, very small changes. So you can see it's, it's able to identify this left bot a lot more reliably than it's able to identify this right bot. Probably down to uh, kind of the, the shadows on it. Um, Let's take a look around and see what other results we get. So, as you can see, like, so obviously this is not a reliable aimbot in that, you know, you're not going to win any games using this thing. Um, but, uh, I was, it's kind of a fun way to play around with it and uh, have, like, a somewhat practical purpose. You can also see, like, it's very sensitive to poses that these guys are making, so as they shoot, uh, the program is having trouble, it's uh, deciding, you know, whether whether it's a target or not. Anyway, so that's that's the front one. That was the one that was generated uh, using just, uh, just the one photo. Um, I also generated one kind of what I'm calling a master one. Uh, this is with a different set of commands 
that basically they use all the positive images together. Uh, so I think I called this one combination. Uh, let's just take a look at what that looks like. Um, Oops, forgot to take this down. So it's still able to still able to find them from the front. Uh, as I remember, it actually didn't have that much success uh, finding them from other sides. I have like um, a couple different photos of. Okay, so. That was one of the better uh, target identifications I've got uh, using this. So it seems like it's able to get the back fairly well, um, at least sometimes from certain angles. As you can see, this is just like really inconsistent. Um, but this is actually working better than I thought it would. Uh, I think I tuned my Kate, my nearest neighbor's uh, parameter, and that seems to be helping a lot. Um, that's basically one of the easiest parameters to tune. I, I already explained what that did. Uh, but yeah, uh, basically there's a, so there's a couple different approaches that you could do if you were to make a name bot. I think it might make more sense just to make a different cascade for each, um, for each angle of the 3D target that you're trying to identify. So, you know, get one from the front and diagonals and, uh, each of, you know, the front, right, left, center, and back. And you'd probably, you'd, I think that, uh, cascades probably work for, you know, 2D, uh, images. So it just makes more sense to have, to take a separate 2D image for each uh, bot that you're trying to get. That said, uh, that actually worked out kind of okay. Um, anyway, uh, that about concludes it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, don't cheat at FPSs. Yeah, bye. <laughs>